This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. But no, the Pharisees and Sadducees were all bent out of shape because it happened on a Sabbath. And so it, verse 28 says that they reviled him, saying, well, you're his disciple. You know, they were accusing him. You know, and this guy, no clue, had no idea what, they were, you know, what was going on. They said, well, you're his disciple, but we are the disciples of Moses. Well, ta-ta. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we don't even know where he comes from. And this guy was pretty smart, actually. He was really, I, I mentioned this last Sunday, I really kind of want to party with this guy when we get to heaven, because this guy was really kind of a, he, 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 was, he, was, he was a smart mouth. I like him. And uh, he said, well, the man actually says, well, this is an amazing thing. Don't you know that that was as cocky as it could be? Well, this is an amazing thing. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it ever been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man who was born blind. If this man weren't from God, he couldn't do anything. Hello? They answered him, Oh, well, you're born in utter sin. And you would teach us, and they cast him out of the temple. Now, when it says they cast him out, it doesn't mean that they just threw him out on the street. It means that they severed ties with him. He was out. They took him off the rolls. You don't have a right. You, you do not have permission to come in here ever again. He was, he was basically just, just completely excommunicated from the temple. And so now, according to the passage that we're going to study today, he's out of the temple. He's been kicked out of the temple. And uh, Jesus goes and looks for him. Jesus goes and finds him. And he had this most amazing encounter with him, starting with verse 35. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And having found him, he said, by the way, I want to stop right there. Think about what that means. This man has been, he's just had this incredible miracle happen in his life. He goes to the temple to worship and he gets excommunicated. Think about what the emotions must have, he must have been going through at that point. Like, wow, what a day I'm having. And Jesus goes and finds him and he says, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And he answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, You've seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus said, for judgment I came into this world that those who do not see may see and those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said, are we also blind? And Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you'd have no guilt. But now that you say we see, you are as guilty as they come. Now, Jesus' question in verse 36, when he said, and who is he, sir, that I... Or, or Jesus' question in, in verse 35 was, do you believe in the Son of Man? His question is in the emphatic tense in, in the Greek, meaning it was a call to believe in the Messiah. What he was saying was, you, you believe in the Messiah. You, will you believe in the Messiah? It's really, a, it's in the emphatic tense. And the term, which is used in fact, uh, uh, interchangeably, the Son of Man or the Son of God, that term gets tossed around back and forth. Basically, it was, uh, both terms were used, uh, and it was common terminology for the Messiah, the coming one. So Son of Man or Son of God, both were used interchangeably. In fact, King James refers to him, it says Son of God, and then uh, many other translations say Son of Man, uh, because a actually the word in the Greek was anthropos, uh, which means man. And so Son of Man, Son of God, it... it it's the same thing. It refers to the same thing. It was a common term for the Messiah. So, Jesus says to him, do you believe, you, will you believe in the Messiah, the Son of Man? Now, remember, this guy uh, had no idea who, who this was. You see, he hadn't seen him up to this point. If you'll, if you'll remember, Jesus put mud on his eyes and then told him to go to the pool of Siloam and wash his eyes out. And it was at that point that he was healed, not when Jesus touched him. It was when he put the mud on his eyes, sent him to the pool of Siloam, he washes his eyes off, and he's healed. And what does he do? He goes to the temple to worship. 
And it's there that the Pharisees confront him and this whole big uh, conflagration happens. And so he's not seen Jesus physically. He's not seen him at this point. And so he may have recognized his voice, but he had not seen him physically. So when Jesus comes to him and stands before him, remember Jesus came and found him. He's been kicked out of the temple and he's going, what a day I'm having. And Jesus comes to him and says, uh, uh, would you believe in the, in the, uh, in the Messiah? The guy says, well, who is he that I can believe in him? I, I don't, who is he? And, and so what he was saying was, look, I'm, I'm ready to believe. He had the desire to see and to, and to uh, relate to this, this Messiah, this God. And Jesus discloses himself. And he says, you have seen him. And it's he who is speaking to you. Now think about what he was saying. You have seen him. He wasn't able to say that before. You've never seen him before. But now you have seen him. And it is he who is speaking to you. Now, Jesus disclosed himself and he gave this beggar the necessary uh, knowledge for faith. <coughs> what was the necessary knowledge? He said two things. It's me and I'm speaking to you. That was all he needed. That was all he needed to know up to that point. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a blessing.